Hi, I'm Tom Pollack. I'm with Gujan Brothers West System Epoxy. And this is the fourth installment in a series of videos from Sail Magazine. Um, and today we're going to be working on this old J22, filling in and fairing some dings and dents. We've got three specific things that we're gonna do. There's some chafing here, there's a minor impact here, and there's also some impact to the, to the stem of this boat. What we're about to do now is um, wipe the surfaces down with some solvent, a fast evaporating solvent. In this case, I'm gonna be using isopropyl alcohol. And, um, and then we're going to be grinding out uh, each location to get beyond any crushed or damaged fiber. And then eventually we're going to be backfilling with a low density thickened epoxy that will be easy to sand tomorrow. And of course, we're putting the safety goggles on because we are working with solvent. Okay, what we're doing is we're removing contaminants so that as we get into sanding um, later, we're not pulling contaminants from the surrounding area back into the area that we're trying to apply and bond the epoxy to. All right, now we're going to go ahead and grind these out with some coarse sandpaper so it'll excavate the damage very quickly. Now you could use a cordless drill like this right here with some 40 or 36 grit sandpaper on it, or you could use one of these nicer professional right angle grinders, which is what I'm going to choose to use. Okay, we excavated the bulk of the damage with the 36 grit sandpaper and now we're gonna come back and sand by hand with just some 80 grit. It's always nice to have a nice gentle transition so that your epoxy fairing is not just an abrupt end. You wanna have a nice gentle taper. Okay, we're going to mix up a small batch of epoxy now. We just need one pump resin, one pump hardener. And what we're going to do initially is, um, of course, stir it up real well. And then we're going to brush a very, very thin coat of epoxy on each of those places to kind of prime these areas. If we don't do that, thickened epoxy may not want to cling to that surface very well. Now we just need a very little bit of epoxy on each of these spots. And we don't want to put a real heavy coat because it'll act like a lubricant for the thickened epoxy. Now you have two options at this point. You can either wait and just allow that to cure to the point to where it's tacky like flypaper, which might be an hour. Or you can just take some paper towel and wipe the excess off because we don't need much on there. And then that way, for sure, our fairing won't slide off. Okay, now working with that same batch of epoxy that we started with, we're gonna go ahead and thicken it with this low density filler. In this case, it's 410 Microlite. You wanna make sure you start with a small amount of epoxy in your cup, because if you start off with a half a cup of glue, you'll never get enough filler in there to achieve a non-sag consistency. Now once you think you got it mixed well, I would suggest you scrape it to the side of your cup and mix it a little more. What that does is it, it weans out the air bubbles that you stirred in it so you get a reasonably air-free fairing compound. Okay, so it's all set now. So I'm just gonna take some, apply it to a plastic spreader. Then I'm gonna go ahead and apply it in the middle and kind of press it down and go back to the middle and press it down. And then I'm going to, again, from the middle toward the edges. Now, if you don't mind sanding, you could leave it like that, but I don't like sanding if I don't have to. So 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this spreader so it's kind of matching the curve of the hull, and then I'm going to draw it across. And now there's not a lot of excess epoxy to have to sand off of there. All right, we're going to do the same thing again now on the one right next to it. So come tomorrow, we'll sand and be about our business. Okay, it's the next day and the fairing compound that we applied yesterday afternoon is now set up very nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and wipe those surfaces down briefly with just a little bit of water. That'll remove any amine blush if any formed overnight and that will then uh, lessen the chance that our sandpaper will load up. Now I'm going to go ahead and put on a pair of gloves and put on a little bit of uh, safety gear. Okay, now we're going to start with uh, some 40 grit sandpaper initially, although I think these areas are actually quite good. Sometimes we'll use a, a batten, a wood batten, that's nice and straight and true and then we'll rub some chalk on it and then that'll verify. You see the edges are a little bit higher than the center. We're gonna hope that there's still enough in the center to where we don't have to do any refilling. Okay, now I'm gonna switch to a longer sanding block that's got some 80 grit sandpaper on it. And the reason I'm going to this longer sanding block is, is I don't want to create flat spots. With a shorter sanding block, I could very easily create flat spots. And with this, it's kind of like a fairing batten. And the nice thing about a long sanding block is it's referencing off of the adjacent areas. And if it's not too flimsy, it's uh, rigid enough to kind of maintain a fair arc and it's just sanding the high spots. Okay, we're all sanded smooth now and uh, what we're going to do next is apply one nice seal coat of epoxy and we do this for two reasons. One is to basically fill pinholes that inevitably occur when you stir uh, thicken epoxy yourself you can't help but introduce some air bubbles. So I'm just going to put a thin coat on there and that will seal all that up. Now to smooth it off a little bit, I'm going to use one of our foam roller covers that we've cut a little pad out of. And that does a real nice job of laying it down nice and smooth. And then tomorrow morning what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll either wipe it with water or we'll just wet sand with maybe some 180 grit sandpaper and then it'll be ready for primer or for gel coat.